You know, in America, you have a right to say stupid things, and that is the principle that allows for the existence of MSNBC. However, whether we happen to agree or not, I support everyone's right for free speech. Never have I said someone should be silenced. It is when people, however, start acting stupidly to go along with it that they shouldn't be silenced, but now the problems start creeping up. I want to show you the scene in Tucson earlier this week. It is um, pretty frightening stuff. Here it is. Oh, the SWAT team is coming in, right? It was the aftermath of a disaster. Or maybe it was a crime in action. Or worse, maybe it was a, just a victory for a nearby sports franchise, huh? No, no. These police officers were forced to restore order at a local school board meeting. If you remember, I told you the story last week after a Tucson school board meeting got a little out of hand before it ever got underway. The school officials had the nerve to suggest that teaching children to try to reclaim American land for Mexico is a kind of a questionable concept. Not, of course, questionable enough to cancel the class. No, no, no. Just questionable enough to make sure the class is an elective rather than mandatory. There is a legitimate question over whether this class is even legal. You see, Arizona has one of those crazy laws that public schools just can't promote the overthrow of the United States government or promote resentment towards a race or class of people, among other things. What hate mongers in Arizona. You remember when you were a kid and you got back from recess only to spend the rest of the afternoon learning how to overthrow the government? Oh, man, those are the days. So what else is taught in this wonderful class? Well, I have some of the material here. It's, um, it's really fantastic. I like the part about... Um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the day when the dominant white culture celebrates the beginning of genocide. <laughs> oh, those memories of turkey stuffing, cranberry sauce, and grandma talking about genocidal celebrations. <sighs> Sorry. Yes, it is part of the upbringing of every gringo. But let's not forget the fantastic scholarly moments when kids are taught that Americans are currently taking over America through multiplication. Yes, yes. How did students react to the extreme injustice of having to opt into this wonderful class? Watch. <laughs> They actually chained themselves to school board members' desks, refusing to leave. The meeting was canceled, but some of the members snuck around to watch the chanting, which continued for an hour. So earlier this week, the school board tried to take up the discussion again. Surely those kids who are being taught to overthrow their government would behave this time, right? No, shockingly, no, not so much. The rage again. Riot police were called in to restore order. School board members had to be taken out of the classroom or the room until the room calmed down. And then, of course, the vote never could take place. You know, the chant from Wisconsin, what does democracy look like? This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Yes, it is. But you'll never guess, you'll never guess who's involved in this spontaneous eruption. We'll show you more next. I just showed the outrage that erupted at a school board meeting in Tucson this week. Police and riot gear had to be called in because the, the teenagers were out of hand. Might look like a scene that uh, the left would typically applaud as a spontaneous uprising. Right, grassroots. It's grassroots community organizing, you know. But this time, even the liberals are concerned. Journalist Mike Shaw, who lives in Tucson, Arizona, talked to a woman who describes herself as a former community organizer and a Democrat. She is part of a nonpartisan group that was asked by the school board to look into this curriculum. She says this program has been hijacked by social justice and called the, American, uh, the Mexican American curriculum inflammatory. Hmm. Now, one of the group's other members, a former teacher, described the type of teaching that is going on now in the class. The same uh, way of teaching that's being done in Nicaragua and other communist-controlled countries, uh, it's Marxist-driven, it's, it's all about uh, op opposition to capitalism, it's all about the class struggle, and it's all about looking through everything through the lens of race. America got to wake up pretty quickly. The kids, you see, are protesting. And they're part of a youth group 
Yeah, and they're, they're being coached to act this way by a local professor. He was in the back of the room handing out speeches to each of the children. They were being ordered, commanded, and uh, they were being good soldiers. No one in the world could have convinced me that that was actually occurring until I saw it myself. That lady is the one who is the Democrat, liberal, that actually agrees with social justice that's saying, help. They're also getting support from local community organizers. Wow. I want to show you this picture. I mean, let me show you the picture of the protest here. You recognize anybody in this one? Put the shadow on. Put it on. Whoa, who's that guy? Look familiar? Ward Churchill, you remember him? The former University of Colorado professor who was fired after his comments about 9-11, calling the innocent victims of 9-11 little Eichmanns, you remember, that eventually led mercifully to his firing. What on earth is he doing in Tucson? Probably looking for a job. Seems like the teaching this sort of material would quite come quite naturally to him. Do you remember how upset people were just a few years ago when he was teaching in a college classroom. Now, imagine this guy is now rounding up little troops in high school. Where's the outrage? Where is it? In Tucson, people are now starting to split. People who have been friends for years aren't talking to each other. Read the curriculum. We'll make it available at glenbeck.com later today. You've got to see this stuff. The state, by the way, is expected to rule this month whether or not this program adheres to the law at all. I can save you some time. It doesn't. The school district stands to lose millions in state funding, which, of course, they should if they can't stop teaching kids to revolt against the government. I mean, it's really not that high of a standard to clear, is it? Wake up, America. Indoctrination is repeating itself over and over, not just in Arizona, but all around the country. And tomorrow night, I'll be talking to teachers from all around the country who have said... They've had enough. They've had enough. Don't miss tomorrow's episode. A few years ago, I, um, I met a guy named Marcus Luttrell. I met him after I had been told over and over again about this book. He's the only guest I've ever had on my radio show that I asked back three days in a row he told the story of this book on my radio program. It was the most amazing three hours, I think we did, of probably my broadcast career. And we became good friends, and I love him. He is the lone survivor. This is the story of SEAL Team 10. He was the eyewitness to Operation Red Wing. It is a story of courage and compassion. This Saturday, the Navy is christening its newest warship, the USS Michael Murphy. He was a member of SEAL Team 10 and good friends with Marcus. They went into Afghanistan after the World Trade Center bombing. They were some of the first people in Afghanistan, and what they were doing there is they were just trying to watch one guy. They were told, just watch him, keep track of him. They were looking for one guy, and they were hiding. And it was their compassion that got three of the four killed. They had a hundred Taliban fighters that they were around and they were hiding and a shepherd came over the hill and stood on this log. And one of them was hiding underneath the log and he just kept thinking, don't look down, don't look down, because they had to kill him if they were found. Just then, the shepherd's son stood up on top of that log as well they looked down. The SEALs didn't kill the child. They just couldn't kill an innocent child, even though that's what they're ordered to do. If you get caught, you kill them, otherwise they're going to turn you in. Well, one of them said, we can't do it. And their compassion had them leave, let these two go. Well, as soon as they got over the hill, they went right to the Taliban and ratted them out. And Lieutenant Murphy's courage and his compatriots courage that they all displayed is the reason why his name is on this ship. My friend Marcus Luttrell and two of his other SEAL members were trapped in a ravine with Michael Murphy and they could no longer get a signal out and there were 2,500 Taliban now trapped, trapping them in there and they're just shooting down. 
and they're dying one by one. And Lieutenant Murphy knew they had to call for help. The only way he could get a signal is if he went right out in the open. Everybody knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to die. But he went out and made the call, and the Taliban shot him. At one point, they shot him right in the center of the back, and he dropped the phone, and he reached down and picked it up and finished the call. He even, he even said, thank you, at the end, before he hung up. He died trying to save his friends. This is the most incredible story you will ever read, The Lone Survivor by Marcus Luttrell. I am proud to call Marcus my friend. He is the only surviving member of that team. I told this story on the air today in a little more detail. You can hear it if you go to glenbeck.com. But it's appropriate on a week where we are saluting the SEALs how appropriate we salute Navy SEAL Michael Murphy, a ship named after him, but to me it will always have a subtitle, Compassion and Courage. Coming soon, the first ever Glenn Beck Quiz Show. Think you could answer questions about the stuff Glenn's covered over the last two years? I talk about the dangers of big government, collective salvation, the Tides Foundation. If so, we'd like to put you to the test. Who does Glenn call the spooky dude? The <laughs> spooky dude. <laughs> Who does Glenn hate? Hate this guy. Who does Glenn love? I love him. Show off your Beck IQ and write in for tickets at BeckQuizShow at FoxNews.com. Do you understand? <laughs> this is a ridiculous show, but I'm glad you're here. Um, make sure you join us. The game show sounds actually like fun. I don't, I, I don't think I can do the last one. I don't know. Uh, Tiffany, am I going to be the Are they playing against me? They are going to be challenging you about your own show. I don't even know. You might score better than me, I don't know. Uh, tomorrow on this program, it is time for teachers to be heard. We've, we've talked to students, we have talked to parents, but teachers. Tomorrow, a full audience of teachers that are tired, and they are going to take on the indoctrination in their schools and unions. You will be surprised to learn these teachers don't want tenure. A lot of them don't even want unions either. They want to teach, but the system, they say, is preventing them from doing it. It's an hour that you must watch, and I urge you to watch with your kids. And then Thursday next week, we're going to fill our audience full of viewers who say they've been inspired in one way or another by this program. They took action in their communities or just in their own lives. And if you'd like to be a part of that audience show, send us your story along with your name and your town to glenbecktix, T-I-X at gmail.com. Put inspired in the subject line and come on to New York. While you still can, you don't need a passport. We also want you to uh, tell us some of the other shows that maybe you'd like us to do. Maybe we've missed uh, some history on a subject and you'd like to hear more about it. We want your voice to be heard. Until tomorrow night, from New York, good night, America.